<laughs> and apologies as a minute taker for getting that to you <laughs> so late. your committee. <laughs> officially announced until February 5th, so please don't share that quite yet, um, even though I'm sure the word's going to be getting out there, but I would like it to not be the ones that do that. So, um, so we have um, a request out, and the proposals are due on February 10th, which is a Monday. We're going to be opening them that afternoon of February 10th, so um, <coughs> we'll be opening them like around 10 o'clock on the 10th, and then we're going to be doing interviews. Um, I think on the 12th and 13th, possibly 14th, and making a decision for the 17th. So we have a really tight That's time, very time frame. Awesome. Yes, it's so in, tight. So in person interviews? Yes. So we are going to let folks know um, um, that it's, yes. Yeah. I think, in fact, I think it even in the RFP, it might have even said that it was um, <coughs> going to be a tight time frame, but also I think that the 10th was when we were hoping to um, open the proposals. So, so I have that, I just have a Monday held at the moment. The right, so, so just so know that. Which other know, days did you say? The 12th through the 14th, just okay. sort of, I, that's why I wanted, I sent that email because I wanted to make sure that you had a heads up so you yeah, could keep, that, keep those times open. So, um, so there's that, and then also, um, I think the, the CCA process is still is moving forward. We had a meeting this afternoon, and um, Darcy or Andra could um, <coughs> comment on that. But that effort is moving forward, and um, we have some funding to be looking um, to move towards uh, um, convening a joint, creating a joint powers agreement that will eventually lead to a joint powers entity that will then sort of be the entity that is the CCA. Um, so we're kind of excited about that moving forward. So that was a great meeting today. Um, and we got some DLT. I wrote um, a DLT request from the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. So they're going to give us some technical that assistance. That is a what? I'm going to say that. that's a district, <laughs> district local technical assistance. So that will be giving us some technical assistance to work on um, specifically working on becoming a, creating the joint powers agreement. So we're going to have some someone to assist us with that process. 
who can do research and also draft some language for us as well. So that's kind of exciting. some input, but I mean, so for instance, um, let's just say I'll use the land, the solar landfill as an example. We're contracting with Cypress Creek Renewables, and that's who we have the contract with, but they needed to have someone hired to do the environmental permitting. We don't get to choose who they hire to do the environmental permitting, but if we were really, if we had very strong objections, we could at least voice them to them, but ultimately the decision of who they sub subcontract with is really theirs because they're essentially they're paying them. I guess you could find that out in the interview, right? Well, right. so I would say that um, when, and Steve and Dwayne can probably speak to this as well from experience doing projects, but you would expect the contractor to come with the subs that they're planning on and using in the interview and, and propose them as a package. So I think in some of you know, the climate action plan, I would expect them to have an idea of what subs they typically work with. We'd want them to have a relationship with those groups. There may be a reason why we'd want to push for someone else, but um, sometimes arranging marriages like that are not <laughs> great. <laughs> so I think we would want, and, and I don't think we want to do a lot of that background work. I think we want the contractors, or the, the main, consultants to come with us with, this is who we're going to work with, this is why they bring, what they bring to the table, and we're making a decision on the whole package. And I think some of the, the I mean, you used some examples, some very specific examples, and as far as I know, you know, those, um, so the consulting firms, a lot of them, for instance, you pointed out one specific firm, uh, Kim Lundgren and Associates, they work with lots of different consultants. So, you know, I would expect that that firm may be one of the subcontractors that might be, like a few people on the list. So, uh, and I expect, as you said, I expect that they will. Like, I'm sure there are a couple that I know for sure would definitely bring them to the table. I don't, you know, want to sort of say too much ahead of time, but because I don't know. I think it's a reasonable um, interview question. I mean, if they don't yeah. spe speculate who they, if they speculate that they will have sub subcontractors, right. but they don't sp specify who they are, right. I think it's a legitimate con uh, interview yeah. question. Yeah, and that was who. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yeah. 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 Yeah, right. Yeah, right. yeah, right. Yeah. I asked the chair of the, of the Concord <laughs> Sustainability Advisory Committee, and he explained that they use this Kim Lundgren Associates as their overall subcontracted with X group for, for to get in the weeds on mitigation and another one on adaptation. So that's just what lagged it for me because I wasn't really aware of how the process worked. And we may I mean, you know, again, if there you know, if there are like specific
specific questions and things you want us to bring to the interviews, you can get them to me. Again, you can't deliberate all together, but I could make um, a list. Email. We can deliberate email. right now. No, you can deliberate as a group, yes, of course. I'm saying if you're going to send them to me, you, you know, because I think we have another meeting before that um, any kind of interviews are happening, I think, right? So I'm just saying yeah. that you can get, you can, however, I don't, we don't have it on the agenda tonight, but unless you want that to be the update on the MVP process and just be coming up with questions. So we, last week we did come up with four questions, um, and I have noted down as an action item. They were in the ERFP. Um, so for people to look at this list and send any insights to Stephanie, although I don't think I actually sent this list out to everybody, so I apologize for that. So I will make sure I send it out to folks. Um, yeah, they might be in the minutes. Um, I mean, the questions we raised, how would you approach the process with a town like ours, with the colleges, renters, etc.? How would you best utilize the expertise of the committee, and what is your approach to working with active citizens? How do you pull together ideas from different sources into a cohesive plan? Ways they would lower the environmental impact of their work? Um, those were the four we came up with. So I think we can um, see if we have time at the end of our meeting today, but um, since we spent time on the last week, yeah. um, maybe we can think on this a little more and add and send more and we can get a full list before the next meeting. Any other general, Evan, you had a comment, I thought. Oh, uh, just very brief and maybe not even of interest. So uh, I joined most of the town council this past weekend in Boston at the Massachusetts Municipal Association. Um, and two of the more interesting sessions I went to were preparing your community for ch climate change and renewing the municipal energy landscape, which was mostly about CCA and trying to sell you on CCA. And I was like, well, we're doing that, so we don't need this. Um, but there were some really interesting presentations um, that did strike me as potentially useful uh, to this committee going forward. One was from a select board member in Lexington about how they made um, a net zero school work, um, not just technologically, but financially, and how they were able to convince their town to rethink how you bond a project um, to, to justify, because they don't have the requirement that we have, and yet they were able to sell their town on well, if we bond it this way. So that was really interesting. I want to follow up with them on that. Um, and then the second one was a project in Millbury um, that m merged sort of a downtown revitalization project with a climate adaptation process. And so they were able to cobble together grant funding from the MVP program. They got a million dollar action grant, which I don't know how they managed to get a million dollars. I don't either. But MVP? The, what? MV, oh, what MVP. Is Millbury. The, the whole the whole project was one point nine million, and one million of it was an MVP action grant. Wow. Which people in the audience who had applied for action grants and not gotten them then were very mad <laughs> about <laughs> that and very vocal about it. Um, must have been one of the first ones. Idea. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But it was cool because then they also were able to cobble together funds from other things that were like economic development initiatives and downtown initiatives to put together a project that sort of merged redoing streetscapes with rain gardens, but also figuring out ways to make it, it was just, and, and I think that uh, the town right now is looking at our downtown in a bunch of ways. There was a presentation to the council on Monday of a bunch of downtown projects, and it got me thinking about going forward with this focus on the downtown, uh, trying to pair some of these, an MVP grant, instead of saying, we have an MVP grant to do this thing, can we pair an MVP grant with CPA money and, and water sewer money and money from the transportation? And, and, and do something bigger. So mm -hmm. um, I have all those, not all of them, but most of those presentations, yeah. and so if they're ever of interest to people, I can also send them to you. Um, Could you I definitely want them. Yeah. yeah. Be cool. um, do you know who, I, I guess I'd be interested to know on the Millberry one, who like spearheaded that, how they actually got it to happen? It was presented by Lori Connors, Director of Planning and Development. Uh -huh. So you can always reach out to her. But, um, yeah, one million. <laughs> one million MB, fiscal year 19 MVP action grant, one million dollars. Is there any um, funds for committee members to go to conferences? <laughs> I 
I don't even, I can't go, I, I have to, if I wanted to go to MMA, I would have had to pay. Interesting. So, I mean, some staff are covered, mm -hmm. but it's not like every year staff can go. I think if I wanted to go this year, I would have had to pay. The only time I've gone twice, and it's because I was a presenter both times. Mm -hmm. So, think I'd like to go, I would have liked to go um. too. There's a conference on buildings in Boston. The building Energy Conference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you going to that? Um, not that I know of at this point. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 there are people at the university that yeah. clearly go, but and that I relate to. But you, you can do it by Zoom. Mm. Uh, is this the NESI conference? Like in, no, uh, oh. Is it uh, yeah. March, I think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, oh. no there's um, something tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> Um, I like those kind of things. So, uh, annual report discussions. This is something we didn't get to at our last meeting. Um, I did have a document that was pulled together for the last meeting. Senator Darcy, if you want to take the lead on. Sure. Um, so um, I had brought up that our charge requires us to provide an annual report. And in the, in the, um, in the charge, it says the annual report, report needs to cover those things, that those five bullet points, um, and one of which is funding needed to enable initiatives recommended by the ECAC. So I was thinking that that we, in order to get a funding request in for FY21, we would need to be doing it now or, you know, like last November. Um, and um, so it's, I was thinking that, you know, we should do a, do a, um, an early annual report. But I, you know, that is the more important part of this question. Want to decide to do our annual report regularly in December, you know, the last month of the year. Um, that seems like a great idea. We don't necessarily have to do one early, but we do want to think about do we want to put in a budget request for this? Do we want to send a memo to the town manager um, t um, and the relevant committees about do we want to have? some appropriation in the FY21 budget. And his, his budget goes to, goes to the Finance Committee in May, and goes to Town Council in June. Um, so most of what's going on is happening in the different departments now. And um, so uh, I had suggested <coughs> three different things that we might consider for one is um, the, whether we want to just go recommend support for the resident capital request that Andrew put in for the students, which she's going to talk about today. One is, um, do we want to just put in a statement saying um, that we support the current capital request has a bunch of items that pertain to vehicles, roofing, HVAC systems, energy systems. Um, do we want to like just make a statement saying we want them to consider being integrated into the climate action plan to the extent that we have one by the time? You know, I don't know how we would phrase that, but there are a bunch of things in the budget that are going to last for 30 years. And do we want to just make some kind of statement about that to the town manager? Um, that's one thing. And thirdly, um, I uh, think that it would be cool to give Stephanie some help um, by either, either, you know, one or the other of either trying to get money in the budget for an assistant for her. Um, or the other idea that I thought of was 
position of like that would be completely different from Stephanie's um, <coughs> to create like an, an energy specialist so that for um, for situ if we're looking at a situation where we're going to be doing all this solar development coming down the road, we're going to be putting solar on rooftops, you know, municipal rooftops or parking lots or whatever we're going to be doing. Um, in Newton, they have two positions. One of them is a, um, an engineer who is a specialist. And he, instead of hiring a consultant a million times for one for each project, they have somebody on staff who's the actual person who goes out and you know, finds the foundation points for the solar canopies, figures out, figures out how the canopies at the middle school are going to connect to the, to the, um, you know, the middle school, how, you know, whether they're going to, if they're going to have a bus depot, how that will all work, you know, if they're going to have vehicle to building, charging, et cetera, et cetera. Someone who, who is a specialist. So they have a person like that in it, who's just on staff. And they're saving a boatload because they have all these projects coming down the pike, and they don't have to hire, you know, outside to, to they just have somebody on staff that can go out and do this stuff. So, um, I did propose this to Paul when I had my meeting with him, <laughs> and he's, it, it sounded like he thought it was a good idea. So, um, how it would be funded is unclear. It might have to be somebody who's replacing another position that's leaving, or I don't know. We never get new staff in this town. Um, so that is just an idea that we might want to hash over as to, you know, getting assistance for, for Stephanie so that she's not, you know, she's doing so much high-level work that I, I feel like her, her job description should change. You know, take away the, the sustainability festival and, you know, it's all me just micromanaging everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, she's doing a ton of high-level stuff. Um, so I see her as more than a sustainability coordinator. And I also see this other position. And I see that many of the towns in Massachusetts or, and elsewhere that are really making dramatic progress are towns that have a committee like this, and they have, like, solid sustainability staffing that are behind it. In other municipalities with CCA, is there staffing associated with CCA commonly? No one's doing it this way, no. Okay. Yeah, that would be, a, that's a whole different thing that, that we're hoping for staff. From yeah, CCA. I was just wondering if there might be overlap between some of those roles or if that might be a way to... Well, there, if there could be, yeah. but we're ways away from having CCA staff. So I think um, one one idea that um, so I think there's two maybe two discussion points here, but um, on on if we want to write a memo of some sort that sort of makes some assumptions about some of the things that are going to be in our climate action plan or that we're going to move forward with, I think that making sure that capital requests that have energy have been reviewed through a lens of the climate action plan, operational savings and costs. I think that, and this is Darcy, a point that you made very, very early on, <clears throat> I'd like to see us move towards your proposal of integrating sustainability into the job descriptions and roles of people that we hire. So, um, because I think even if we were successful in getting, I think what we need to do is elevate sustainability to the, in the town to the level of the other directors in town, and I think we do need more support. Um, but I think that from my own experience, what you really need is people in each department that have to own a piece of it as well. Um, otherwise, you're never going to get a big enough sustainability team to do the work, do all the work. Like, so uh, thinking about the economic development person that's leaving, like can the new economic yes. development person have written in their job description very clearly that they're gonna do some of the stuff that Evan just talked about. Yeah, right. right. Work on renewable development as part of their role. So like I think 
if that's something that we think we want to build into the climate action plan, both of those things, elevating the role of sustainability in the town and um, doing that, I think that we could mention those are things that we're exploring in our climate action plan and you should just be aware of this as we're entering into the, the budgeting process cycle. As, you know, I would say, especially because the economic development position has just opened up and that process will start before this climate action plan is done. Um, I had a conversation with someone um, where it was said to me, they saw economic development and sustainability as being across purposes and how, and I said, I don't see them that way at all. And I got a blank stare. Mm -hmm. So, and I will say that I think I, I'm 100% obviously on board with this, and I love what Millbury did. I would say that um, that kind of thinking needs to get out there, like, immediately, and I, I think that example needs to be um, raised as how, because I, I said sustainability creates opportunity. Like, I don't understand how these are across purposes at all. So, old school mentality. Well, yeah, exactly. exactly, and that's why I'm saying that. Like, I think that this is something that shouldn't really could we do the climate. an ECAC news blast, newsletter, press release, some something. That news flash: Sustainability is not an odds of economic <laughs> development. <laughs> you know, like like you know, MMA corner. Here's something interesting, you know, Millbury, blah, blah, blah. And um, school committee, you know, talk, talking about, they're doing a climate action plan. I was just at a meeting last night, and they, they're, they're thinking about this and wanting to join in. Um, you know, could, could we, like, and, and put in IT department looking at, let's get out there that this, is happening. Yeah, I think that's a separate that thing. Could be a component but of the yeah. climate action plan for sure. No, I mean now. I mean like. Yeah, I think it's who, what's our bandwidth and what do we what do we want to focus in on right right now? Now I, we're talking about an annual report to yeah. the town council. Mm -hmm. Well, we're talking about budget. Well, right. no, we're talking about the annual report with the idea of inserting in some premonitions of things that might impact the budget. No, it budget could requests. be that we decide, no, we're not going to do an annual report, but yes. we'll do a memo about the budget because we're not ready to do an annual report. Could, uh, one thing I would, I, I don't know if I can officially, I would just say that because this economic development position is now open and there will be a search, I don't, it, it seems to me that you all being aware of that um, could maybe just send a memo to the town manager just sort of using Millbury as an example of this is the kind of forward thinking we hope when there is a search committee that's convened or maybe you could even request that somebody from this committee is on the search committee. Mm -hmm. You know, just, you know, I'm just giving you ideas of some way you might want to I guess I have your concerns yeah. expressed now. And that was a tact that I was interested in, in uh, discussing. And um, just so I understand, who who um, is it the town manager that hires this position? Yes. And the search committee is made up of, of um, senior leadership in the That's town. Like whoever he chooses. And who he, he chooses. Um, and so the pro the uh, job description has already been posted and written. written I don't know. Posted. That's We're why I'm, okay. I'm not That's sure. Right. I don't. Okay. Think if so. there's still time to affect how it is framed, I think we should move quickly to do yeah, that. Yeah. And that's why I'm just saying you might want to at least make a recommendation. Um, because it is important. And I think, especially now that the town's adopted these carbon neutrality goals, you know, it if we're ta we've been talking right from the beginning, is we need to change systemic thinking. And I'll yeah. tell you, this position is certainly one which really need. it has a lot of influence. In and to have time. at least one of the evaluation criteria, if not requirements that somebody who is um, knowledgeable about sustainable sustainability issues and, and uh, um, um, climate, climate adaptation, climate resilience. And has I 
ideas on how to yes. be yeah. innovative yeah. around yeah. these sort of yeah. things. Yeah. Right. Who writes the job descriptions? Is that the town manager? Uh, it's the HR will work with the town manager. I mean, he, he sort of gets to decide what <coughs> responsibilities are included in the job well, description. Well, HR, HR usually that's their function. HR kind of has a, a, an existing description and will probably run it by the They'll town manager. They'll probably brush off the last time you hired an economic Yeah, economic exactly. Person. And the town yeah, manager right. can weigh in. I'm just, that's why I'm saying if you... Well, I'm just curious, yeah, who has the power to add a new responsibility to a job? Oh, the town manager. Yeah. 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 Good. I, mean, I think a, a memo to him with, this, with a suggested paragraph language yeah. and, and maybe yes. some qualifications. So, so, context on this. So, I mean, Jeff is our first ever economic development director position created under John Musanti, yeah. who passed away yeah. before someone was even hired for that position. And then Paul inherited a position that he didn't create and that he didn't hire the person yeah. for. And yeah. so he, I believe, is in a situation where uh, this position was originally created with someone else's vision. Mm -hmm. And so he is trying to figure out what his vision is. And so I don't actually think they will just dust off the last job description because that was a different town manager who had his own vision for the economic development director that really never transferred over. And so uh, I would say probably within the next two or three weeks is when the town manager will be figuring out what he even wants an economic development director to do. Because that's, it can be in a million different things yeah. for an economic can we as a committee then draft some language or uh, select a couple people to, or per, uh, one person to draft some language to share with Paul? Certainly suggesting some of our ideas about what we think this position should do and being pretty bold in what we think we're, we might imagine it as be being. Good, but I think it would be good if, you know, there was a meeting. So why don't we do this? I think what we should do is send him a note fairly immediately and say that we've been talking about this, we want to suggest some language, or potentially have a meeting with you to talk about it, um, but in the meantime we're going to work on some language and we'll send it your way, so he knows it's, and then maybe somebody, to Ashwin to your point, could work on, maybe look at some other examples and work on something. He may not want us to suggest language, he may just want to meet with us and hear what we have to say, but I think meeting it is most Important, yeah. really? Yeah, just people, meetings are hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And dra um, I mean, drafting language for him, um, that can go a long way, too, because yeah. um, one reason why you might not do it is just because you don't have enough time to do it. I mean, I think even just sending him an email saying, like, we discussed this, it is our yeah. sense that we have a huge opportunity here to reframe economic development in Amherst as centrally about uh, achieving sustainability objectives. And here's some ideas about how we might do that. We'd love to meet with you to talk more about what our vision is. I mean, I think just getting that note might go some way towards getting them thinking about this. Yeah, I would say yes, do that, if you could do that as chair, and then if he indicates we have two weeks, then we set up some of the group people who come back to this group with a proposal, we work on it a little bit at the next meeting and give it to them. Mm -hmm. If he wants something in less than two weeks, then I would say we go ahead and give a small group here authority to mm -hmm. write something mm -hmm. without further meeting time. There's also the possibility that he will not fill no. this position. He will not actually look. Well, then that's an opportunity to, there's a team right funding there, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah. I, think that, I think it should be, I think all of this should be framed in the context of our climate action planning process is going to identify, it's, it's going to identify strategic systematic changes that we need to make, including things potentially like changing the structure of the sustainability function, elevating it, adding sustainability to jobs, and we, but we want to be proactive about this opportunity. And he could ignore it if he's not going to fill it. I mean, I think asking to be on the search committee is also important. I think this is one of those jobs that I think could really, you know, be a game changer. Mm -hmm. um, so, so let's, um, so we, this kind of got a little bit off topic, but I think that, that, so I guess the question, I think we should do that, unless anybody has any reservations about throwing that out to, to Paul. No. Okay. Um, and we'll see what
what, what, he, what he comes back with. Um, and if he wants some input on language or, or, or things. Um, that's one point. I think that the question more broadly, Darcy, that you were raising about budget requests generally, is there any, if we wanted to write something about capital request or like, you know, some, I think that, I think we're going to get far. I think our climate action plan as a basis for these asks in the future is going to be really important yeah. because then we can look to it and say this external group helped us and, you know, from their expertise is showing us that we really need to buff up our sustainability staff. Um, so I don't think we're going to make much progress on that in this fiscal year, but I do think it may be helpful just to note that that's what we're hoping, right? In case something falls out of the woodwork that all of a sudden there's a bunch of money that hires Stephanie to hire assistants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that would be sound perfect to, in a short annual report, say that next year it's likely, as part of the climate action plan, we will be proposing a budget request or forming a budget request that might include travel for meeting, <laughs> maybe hiring somebody in town. We could list two or three things from small to large. Mm -hmm. so I, I think from what I read in the town council report to Paul that we were given, they seem to appreciate having advance notice mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. different ideas. Yeah. They're also very receptive in several places to sustainability initiatives. Yeah, I was, I was yeah. It seems like, though, that it would be somewhat of a lost opportunity not to ask for something in the FY21 budget. Um, because then we have to wait a whole other year to get anything. And an obvious thing would be staff. So mm -hmm. this is a good idea about the economic development person. But um, I mean, we could also ask for an energy or a half-time assistant for Stephanie. Yeah. You're, are you talking about like a, a full-time benefited yeah. one FTE energy specialist? Yes. yes. Request? Yes. Energy engineer. Yes. And Paul did say that he's planning on, and I'm sure he said this to you, that you know he's already planning on giving Stephanie an assistant, and guess who it is? Mm -hmm. Someone who's already working here. The community participation officers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, and I'm saying it like that because they've been given many, many tasks, you know, to, you know, every time something comes up, you just give it right. to them. Um, but so we're not getting new expert staff, essentially. Yeah, but they're, so they're going to help Stephanie with the, with the festival. Well, they're helping with the festival. I mean, right. but that's not like an ongoing, uh, right? He made it sound I, like I think was. what, I agree with Evan that that's an awfully big ask that's going to have to be really well justified. An engineer. Well, yeah, full well, any, any, yeah. any FTE. Wait, wait, wait. FTE. Yeah, I mean, you, we're not getting a full-time benefit as one FTE person. Um, I think where the opportunity is, if you're looking for a staff perspective, is what we just talked about, is trying to... I want to be very careful, because Darcy and I are in a very delicate position when it comes to the town manager and staff, but influence some of these decisions. So the economic development director we know is in open position. The other thing that should be on our radar is that, so Downtown Parking Working Group made this recommendation of a parking coordinator as a new position. It's been recommended by the council committee. There's also been this open planner position for a while. There's a vacancy that hasn't been filled. And not it's budget is for. It's, it's there. It's, it's, it's budgeted. budgeted. And there's it's interviews budgeted. that happened. Yeah, but uh, there's been and nothing. Process. There's a part of me that my suspicion, and I could be completely wrong, and this is complete speculation, mm -hmm. is that the town manager will probably try to merge this planner position and this parking coordinator position and create a planner that's transportation focused, mm -hmm. which if there's going to be a new planner hired, which it sounds like there's interviews, and a parking might be part of their role, it seems ridiculous to me to have someone who parking is part of their role, but then also not considering multimodal transportation and, mm -hmm. other, and other things too. And so that's another perhaps way to, to sort of imbue 
sustainability into some of these staff positions without necessarily having to hire a new staff person. Shouldn't, should, <laughs> sorry. People can learn to. Exactly. People can take to pick up. You it, know, yeah, it just has to be yeah. part of their job description and mm -hmm. they have to agree. If they're already hired, they have to. That, yeah. that, that is an important point that I've made that, that this new, you know, we may get this new position. And one of the pieces of it is that he or she will be in charge of transportation policy. So I brought up that that should be, you know, with sustainability integrated into it, obviously, um, which was not accepted, FYI, in the town manager goals. But um, that, that seems almost equally important to the economic development person. Both of these positions are... So what, what I'm hearing here is that we have several positions that are being reimagined right now in various ways and there though and there are kind of the most easily available opportunities for us to ask to have an influence and an Im and a voice in shaping those positions so that sustainability is central to them should not we also ask for what we actually need to accomplish the goals that we have which will definitely include more staffing i know we don't have the money but we're trying to transform the entire economy of this place. Why don't we put that ask in? Because that's what we think it's going to take to do what we're and saying think, that we need to do. Yeah, and I think that's exactly what we're going to put in the climate action plan. Yeah. I think we're being premature to say it now. I think it just okay. won't have the weight that it will have behind. Okay. The I, mean, I, think that, I, mean, with, I mean, one option is to recognize that, that you know, the real, the bigger ask of a FTE or more would come after the climate action plan. But if there's a compelling reason to say there's things that need to be accomplished in the next year, um, then is there a um, compelling argument we can put together to high, you know, uh, put into the budget, not an FTE, but a, a sufficient funds to hire more on a contractor role, mm -hmm. contractor basis, a contractor who has energy engineering sort of pizzazz that can go out and do a study here and there as they come up in this next year of the parking lot. Um, of the high school or whatever, um, mm -hmm. and uh, um, you know, on an on-call basis, a, a certain amount of budget that's available um, for for uh, the town to be able to hire uh, somebody. Well, there is. You, 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 that you, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I it is, does you overlap. Uh, I mean, you know, as opposed to an FTE, request. it's probably more in the order of like forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars, as opposed to a hundred net. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. I'm not sure we want to get too much in the weeds about this, but it, it well, does. This, I, I think know, it's a good idea to in this report to town council, I put in a request for some money. Yeah. And that would essentially establish an account for us, even if it's a fairly small token amount. Yeah. And then they get the idea that we need the money, and then we ask for more in subsequent years. Exactly. Whether it's 40 or 50,000 for. Create a line so, item. Exactly. Or whether it's. and, and travel to conferences, we would probably come up with a list of things and make a request that we, I think would be reasonable that they would grant. So not a budget buster, mm -hmm. uh, not something that would roll their eyes and send us away, but something that would be like... Well, not, not for the committee, for, for, for the, the sustainability department. No, I'm just saying for the committee. Hmm. I mean, the, hmm. I, I don't think so. I don't think committees have budgets. Yeah, I don't... I didn't understand that either. I do, I do think that we have consensus here that we want to send a memo to try to influence the nature of these two open positions. And I think that there may be strategic value in, at every opportunity, repeatedly, continuing to get the idea into leadership's head that the direction that the town needs to move in is well-staffed, permanently staffed people that are doing this work. We're going we're gonna to emphasize exactly what that looks like in the climate action plan, but you know, and just, just for context, obviously we're thinking about this stuff all the time, but this is a town that apparently has in very recent history, tried to hire parking coordinators that don't think about multimodal uh, transportation, right? We're in a context where people are not thinking about this. So I think we need to assert vigorously and repeatedly in all available spaces that this is the direction that we're going in. I would just like to say that, like, I think at our very first meeting, uh, there were a number of people who said that, you know, it's all fine and good that we're going to be spending all this time on a climate action plan, but why don't we start with a finite project? concrete project, and we talked about solar at the high school as being a project. So now we have a capital request for a study for solar on the high school and middle school parking lot uh, for solar canopies. And so that is actually a project that we could, we're not even asking for the project to be funded, we would just be supporting the resident capital request that was for a study, a design study, to get it set up in the next 
so the um, we could also say, you know, the, the town manager's budget that he will present to the town council um, is his, you know, absorbing and shuffling all of the departments and um, requests. And one request from the school district is fifteen thousand for a um, solar study. Uh, it's going to be for the middle school roof, but it, it could be used for ground mounted. Um, and so we could say, you know, keep that in, <laughs> grant the, you know, put in the resident um, request for 25000 for uh, a broader town, you know, solar study, what, what roofs, what parking lots, what possible and um, so include both okay so what I'm hearing is we already made the decision that we were gonna send a memo about the positions on the annual report discussion what I think I'm hearing is that there's general agreement that we would do them in December but maybe there's a good reason to do a short memo type one right now to say Moving forward, we're planning on doing these reports in December, but to address these bullet points, I think all but number four, we can say either progress towards climate goals, C, climate action goals, community engagement, C, community engagement report, the other, the two, second and third, 2BD, TBD, and then funding needed to, to enable initiatives records by ECAC, we could put a few bullet points sentences there that we are, we want to support all requests for funding that that involve renewable energy studies. We want to ask that capital requests that use energy or are involved in making energy be reviewed through a climate action <coughs> lens. We want to let folks know that, you know, we are going to need a well, you know, we're going to be moving forward with a climate action plan that's going to identify budgeting needs for this work. And then I think the open question is, do we want to, is there an ask that we want to make of a certain amount of money for Stephanie's, and as you don't think this even comes through us, that it would have to come through Stephanie's department, right? And then we would just support, maybe it's just us supporting additional funds for the sustainability work that we already have. Yeah, and I, I mean, this, it, my department isn't proposing anything, so again, you know, I mean, How about you can throw it up there. Department, what about it? Could they propose something? Could we ask Steve to? Uh, you, um, They're hiring an assistant right now. Don't want to just stand on the jobs page. That's an administrative okay. assistant for the. That's just support, Never and it's mainly an assistant to Dave okay. as the assistant town manager. It's really primarily what that role will be. So, um, yeah. Um, you can put it out there. I <laughs> it's not coming from me. <laughs> okay. I want that to be yeah. clear. It's not so coming. So it from does me. have to come you from us, not the department. Um, well, no. I mean, or we could put it out there. To you Dave. can put it out to the department. You can put it out to the town manager. Again, I mean, committees have done that before. The conservation commission has done that for their staff of support before as well. Um, and and the history that you told me, if I can share, is that the climate action plan that was written in 20, 2005 was referenced this referenced position. this position and was what helped or at least I think it helped right because it helped make your position full time uh, eventually yeah I yeah. mean it was part time uh, yeah th there are, that's anyway. a little more complicated <laughs> but it just made for the ability for the position to be created that certainly supported you know so there is some precedent for that yeah, piece of it there okay does anybody want to take on the role of of writing up that short memo about the two open positions um the two open positions i can do if someone else wants to start a draft of this one with the um sort of more general goals around and the supporting of the renewable requests i don't see why we would consider that Okay, do you want to drop that up and then we can review it next week? Sure. Next meeting? Next meeting, yeah. sorry. Okay, great. Um, if we were to ask, apart from these positions, uh, and, and trying to get some scope of work in those positions relating to sustainability, if we were to, um, if we were wanting to put in a request for um, some money not FTE necessarily, which might be after the action plan, but some money to get going on a meaningful project.
I mean, so everybody's budget's due to the town manager in the next few months, right? Yeah. And then the town, according to that memo that was in the packet, the month of May is when the budget gets consolidated and decided upon. Um, I think what we would need, to, so yeah, so I think we would need to find some group with which to link up with, I think whether it's a conservation committee. I mean, like some department would have to ask for those funding, funds for us. I don't think that our committee would be asking for funds, right? Should I, I talk? I'm not sure. Could I have a conversation with Dave Zomack and, and just explore the idea? What idea? Of, of budget and, you know, we're going to have to expand the um, sustainability department because it's, you know, already Stephanie has a job and a half because we're creating work for her all right now. And, and to be clear, there isn't a sustainability department. Yeah, there is, okay, okay. There is a I can call it that one. No, but I'm saying that's, <laughs> that's, that's part, part of the yes. point. That <laughs> yes. yes. I understand. <laughs> there, like, yeah. there isn't. There's right. a role. But right now, the and conservation that's... department is holding sustainability. I mean, we're, we're a committee of the town council, right? Yeah. So, I mean, does it make sense for us to... No, we're, not. we're a committee of the town council. No, we're not. We're a committee of the town no. manager. That's true. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, the annual report goes to the town council. The town council. Yes. So, we have two audiences. Right. I think the idea of potentially having a little pot of money that we could use for some studies and stuff is not a bad thing to throw out there. They can always just say no. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I think if there's anything more specific, I don't think we're ready, like, we're not going to be ready in time to ask for something more specific, yeah. I don't think. Yeah. Unless it's married well, with, uh, with uh, the high school project. Yeah, I mean... We can ask for that. We can recommend... That's that separate, isn't it? The town put well, that in the budget. It's all about shaping the budget. Yeah. And you know, he can recommend or not recommend that. Um, we could put it into this, and that's also. Um, How much are we talking about? This is not really a request. $25,000. Yeah, yeah, but for. Just general. For a fund for, for this committee. For oh. How much are we talking about? For this committee? 500. You're talking about putting in okay. a request for money that would just be a pot of money for this committee to use at its discretion? Is that what you're asking? Can, can we get that? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what I was, was going to ask, no, I think what you okay. can, I mean, there could, there could be, um, uh, you know, like a, uh, I could see something like a, an item for, um, for like building projects, you know, specifically, you know, funding that would be earmarked for like building assessments. And that kind of, or engineering studies. Or like there the alternative be, to replacing the boiler that they're going to replace. If they're, if they're not going to look at it, let's have yeah, a contract and say, here's an option it. for these heat pumps right, instead yeah, of this no, boiler. Really good to have, and the Northampton Sustainability and Energy Committee has, has a funding source. Um, I'm not. Did anyway. <laughs> so I think that we, I think we should, say, I mean, I think we should include right. this in the mem. I think we're, we're helped and, and, Harmed isn't the right word, but by having counselors on the committee that know what Definitely. we are allowed, <laughs> are allowed and not yeah, allowed to sure. do, like let's pretend we don't know what we're exactly. allowed and not yeah, allowed yeah, to yeah, do. Totally. <laughs> There's some stuff out exactly. there, That's right. and <laughs> see or, what sticks. Or, I mean, right. yeah, totally. The answer is probably oh, they're not going to yeah. do it, but it's getting it to Ashwin's point. It's getting in their heads, yeah. and yeah. then the next time around we'll ask again, right? So I think we should maybe just throw in like for building assessment because that that point did come up with the library discussion. I mean, they ended up funding it, but when the sustainability committee of the library was looking for doing another assessment on sustainability, it was like, well, doesn't a town have money set aside that does these assessments? And the answer was, well, not really. Exactly. So I think it's not a bad idea. I so agree. Darcy, if you want to include that in the draft um, as well. well. Just so we can leave it kind of blank for, the, for now. For the ECAC. Um, or funding for assessments that support decision making around 
carbon neutrality goals. Yeah, exactly. I don't think it should. It should it's, it's, it's not funding for this committee. No, 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 no it's, it's not it. funding that this committee um, can can um, help um, uh, pursue ideas or recommendations that this committee brings forward. Yeah, yeah. I think, think that's better. Some of the initiatives for that. recommend them. Yeah. We're going yeah, to yeah. be making recommendations. Yeah. Yeah, have, having 500 bucks that we can use to send someone to a conference is like not even really a priority because it's not that urgent. Yeah. Like, and it wouldn't be good in the other committees. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they don't get that. They didn't ask. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Um, okay, great. Um, what did you say? I said the housing trust is a whole different beast. They, they do hold money and they can send people. Can we become a different beast? <laughs> How do we become trust. a different beast? Become a sustainability trust. 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 Yeah. Exactly. So, do you want to attach an amount? An amount to what? To, to the, the money the to the ACS, oh, no, no, no. As, you know, to be able to pursue our initiatives. Oh. Wait, I'm confused. I thought that what we just said is we're not going to ask quite for that. We're going to ask for funding to support to ensure that our recommendations can be implemented, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, um, I don't know, like 50K or something. Mm. <laughs> well, our recommendations already require at least one consultant for a period of time. That it sounds. I mean, I think we might need two consultants. Should we double it? We just want to make it easier for people to get specific enough that it doesn't look like we're just asking. going to be drafting a climate action plan. Exactly. And there's going to be very specific things identified in that plan. So if you can think a little bit along yeah. those lines, yeah. like studies, engineering studies. Um, Beyond what the consultants would be doing. Doing, right. Because I, I don't think, I mean, I don't know our, the consultants that we hire for this drafting of the climate action plan are not going to be probably able to get so deep into no. engineering yeah. studies. We're going to need, that's going to, what they could identify is the process yes. for moving yeah. forward on projects, and one of them might be secure an engineer. So exactly. we're saying, can we have some funding so that we can secure an engineer? I mean, I think we can already anticipate that the climate action plan is going to have specific recommendations in at least a few predictable sectors. We can probably say that there's at least three sectors that are going to require deeper dives into actionable projects. Sounds to me like that's going to call for three you know, dedicated consultants, engineers, whatever it is, to cost those projects, to scope those projects, and to define those projects. That I think we can anticipate that with almost with near certainty at this point. I think we're going to need um, someone, a consultant, to assess. And maybe some of this could happen, um, like every department and its current staffing, and what kind of training might be needed for them to implement the kinds of recommendations we'll be developing. But in terms of getting to the goals, you might have things you need to do that are more, that have more immediate return. Like, um, you know, again, I'm looking to the building assessments. I mean, you need, you're going to need technical expertise. Um, because even with town engineering, you know, we have an engineer, we have a couple of engineers on town staff. We have people that are very smart and very capable, but for the specific kinds of projects that we're going to be recommending, we need a very specific kind of expertise. Mm -hmm. Like the people, you know, the Millbury project, I'm sure they didn't just rely on their, you know, their, their staff. They, yeah. like, had to find people with very specific knowledge, background, mm -hmm. vision, and those are the people that you need to hire. And, and knowing that, like, moving forward, that's, those are the kind of people you want to have some funding to secure, because that's where we always, you know, that's where the rubber hits the road, right? Because So I think um, to move the agenda along a little bit, I think we have enough to do a draft, right, Darcy? I think even if you leave that amount blank or that line, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, a, couple possibilities. a couple possibilities, then we can spend some time at our next meeting. Good. Laura, you're going to just shoot off this memo. I'm just going to shoot off the memo to Paul and say that we've talked about this, we'd love to set up a meeting, slash send you some ideas, and 
I'll send that later today or tomorrow or something, and we'll just see where that goes. Um, um, okay. So I think with that, have we covered your agenda item, Andra? Um, so, well, just so people know, uh, there, there's this mechanism for residents to submit a capital request. So um, I did, and it's very much based on the Newton um, work of doing their solar inventory. But and, you know, but it includes a lot more than just site analysis. It 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 includes. Um, the, the potential for integrating charging stations with solar, you know, solar to um, building integration, storage as, you know, with electric vehicles connected to buildings. It, so it's like more holistic um, than what I learned yesterday, um, Rupert intended when he added the 15,000 for the school solar study, um, you know, he was just thinking, you know, engineer to look at, you know, how much could it be done on this hill here and how much um, would it likely cost um, to, to do some solar siting. Um, the reason not on the middle school roof is because that would have to wait until there's um, state money to redo the roof. Um, but to make that solar ready is something else that's definitely on the agenda, but it you know, doesn't make sense to do that right now um, unless someone could do both. Um, so, so they're not even, you know, at right now he's not even talking about the parking lots. Um, so, it, this, my, my request was for t uh, 25000 and it would be in addition to, and it would have the um, benefit of being flexible because <laughs> a resident put it in instead of a staff member. Um, uh, and one thing that we know from the one time that they've had resident requests like this is that you have to stay on it. So. Um, it would be very helpful to have the ECAC's backing um, uh, on it, you know, to be able to tell you know, the Finance Committee when I have to go and talk to the Finance Committee and JCPC when I have to go talk to them. They would expect to have the ECAC's um, recommendation for it to go forward. So it's actually a specific ask. So you're here with that ask as sort of a resident. Yeah. Bringing that to the ECAC. Yeah, yeah. For us right. to commit sure. to endorse this proposal. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are a couple of high school students. Yeah. 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 Yes, these are that came to the um, community meeting we had in the library? Oh, one mm -hmm. of them, yeah. Them? One, yeah. one of them couldn't come, but yeah. Okay, great. And they're both like Sunrise. Yeah, Sunrise. Like, yeah. EAC. to 
have an estimate of how much money you have to set aside for this? What? Maybe that. I'm not sure. I think so. Some of this, yes. So that's that. My suggestion is: what's the big picture that you'd want an engineer of your own to frame out, mm -hmm. versus what would you expect? Firms that are responding to your RFP. I see. So maybe not the drawings yeah. necessarily. I don't so know. FYI, that came the from the Newton. Person that did all of this. Right. Sorry. So that's interesting. Who did this? The Newton, the Newton staff Newton person, person, the engineer yeah. person who they have on I staff. See. So he may have, you know, this is almost right. exactly what he had. He may have um, all done this, like, well, no, he's just describing. Everything he did, right, 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 okay. right. So he took it beyond. Because mm -hmm. a lot, a lot of this is just study. like a back, back of the napkin map, almost that you can do to put together the basic specs of the of what would then be in the RFP. Right, right. We want it to be, um, you know, deep enough though that you can really answer the question: How much will it cost? And well, hopefully it'll cost nothing because we'll do a PPA and somebody else will pay for it, right? Yeah. Well, hopefully. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, hopefully we can say that. Yeah. Somewhere yeah. depends but, on but. Uh, what we want to claim. Well, yeah, <laughs> but that's a whole different question. Yeah, so that's we can't claim anything under SMART, so it doesn't matter. That's yeah. the kind of thing that well, the engineer do it. might yeah. lay out. You could go this route or you can go that route mm -hmm. uh, and do that larger analysis so that you know what to ask going into a negotiation with responding to the RFP whether you want to do it under this program or that program. Yeah. I can share with you the RFP that we did four or five years ago at Hampshire College, where we framed in fairly general terms, yeah. we yeah. wanted solar arrays that would cover our main campus use, six million kilowatt hours per year. And we, I, I, I think we sort of specified, here's some possible areas that we're considering, but then they came in, 10 different companies came in with very specific proposals on this patch okay. of land and this mountain. That would be helpful. And so they did most of the work. After we wrote the RFP. And we might also be able to get the, uh, to the extent that it's parking lot issues with the parking lot there. Obviously, UMass has a parking lot canopy, mm -hmm. solar, and uh, they're third party owned except for one of them. <coughs> and uh, I, the RFP, I'm sure, would be public information, so I could ask. Uh, yes, that'd be great. Sorry. I was just going to ask with the solar landfill project, yeah. was there, is there a way that the town worked its way through defining yes. the scope of it before going out mm -hmm. with the RFPs? Yeah, we had an RFP. I mean, it's it's been a very, very, very <laughs> long time. So I can go back and find that. I, I actually was on the committee for the very first round that we did, like in 2011 or so. Um, Wasn't the, didn't the company kind of come out of the blue and, and proposed? Yeah, blue town? was in its name, in fact. It was before it went. Blue Wave was, yeah, right, right. But, but there were other companies that applied because we, we interviewed at least after four. Uh, and was there any after we did the work that the, uh, uh, the town did in terms of any substantial expenditure of funds or to, to get any of this information ahead of yeah, time? Yeah, that, that part I don't know. Yep. Um, I know we did an RFP, I remember, because yep. we did the interviews. Yep. And I was, There's probably some work in terms of the condition of the landfill. Well, I was going to say, yeah. I mean, but in a lot of that information we already have because, yeah, yeah, you know, right. there's a post-closure use permit yeah. which identifies, exactly. you know, the yeah. conditions and that's and that's all part of the process of closing the landfill. Mm -hmm. So there's, you know, we're training, there's a yeah. pathway, lots of information. Um, but I'm pretty sure, I know we did an RFP because we had respondents and I know it was not that someone just made a proposal to us. Um, and they did have very different ideas. One of them included having goats maintain the grass underneath the panels way back when. Why not? Meg Vickery was on the um, interview committee. Uh -huh. I like them. Um, like that. So, yeah. so I think, um, I mean, Andre, if I understand correctly, you're saying that this can change over, is this set in stone, or if we got the, if you got the funding, you oh. could use it for what you... No, no, it, it, this is just you know, the request. Yeah. And and so I mean, it's I think gonna go around to all these committees. And is it getting update is it getting edited or is it getting this is the request you're asking for and if you I get the I, money then I, you'll edit it? I knew that this is like RFP and it, it doesn't even belong in or the request really, but just you know, I, I do want you know EAs. ECAC or you know students to continue to be involved to make sure it goes that deep. You might reorganize it to be just a very um, 
couple paragraphs of the, of the request and then add this as a sample RFP. Well, yeah, and I do have to like do something to kind of incorporate the knowledge I got afterwards, the fact that the school is putting in some request for something. Right. So, so you are so I guess going to edit the editing. List. There should, should be some <coughs> something for circulating it. I think that's fine. I mean, I would say a look around for, I mean, I'm, I think based on our previous conversation, we were sort of like, sure, we would, we want the council to support requests around solar analysis and things like that, I mean, in a general sense, right? Well, we talked about solar at the high school. Solar at the high school, yeah. Well, no, it's more. Well, it's, it's municipal well, it's more. and school. Right, right, but it does. And it's not just, just it's not just parking lots. So I think she didn't be, say parking lots. Um, yeah, true. I think it would be good if it if the ECAC voted to actually support this mm -hmm. as well as putting into you know whatever Darcy's drafting general support for okay solar study. So. think about what maybe I'm maybe I'm confused a little bit about the process of this. So you submitted a resident capital request. Are you being asked to edit it in some way for a final request? Or was that no, first request the final Sean request? Sean Mangano did ask me um, if I still wanted to submit it or you know have it be considered because the school already submitted you know, he was equating them. Yes. Uh, and I said, yes, definitely. <laughs> so, and so the school's so requesting the, the, not just a, a more generic the, solar on the roof? Uh, no, but I, I don't think that, I think it's really 25000 for doing a solar study. That That's really what needs the support. And, and it's going to morph as it moves through the process. Did, did you, you submitted the request already? Yeah, yeah. Is it this thing here? Yes. Okay. This is what I submitted and um, it was, I'm pretty sure, the only resident capital request. Mm -hmm. so it seems like then if this is submitted, our choice is to decide whether to endorse it or not. Exactly. We're not here to edit this, although give you some advice for the future. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I will um, take that. I'm trying to think of reasons why we wouldn't. Exactly. So I can't think of any. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I, just, I just want to be careful we don't endorse you know, anything and everything that comes along, because then our endorsement doesn't, doesn't carry much weight. Uh, but this seems solid. And like I said, we've been talking about the concept for a while. So maybe something along the lines of endorsing it in concept, not necessarily endorsing everything down to the details. Yeah, I think that that's what I would say as well, because I actually think there may be a benefit to us endorsing the concept generally. Like, we support residential capital requests around solar and renewable energy and things that support our climate yeah. action plan. Right, right. Maybe there is another one, and we don't know about it. Because I, my one, like, hiccup is that if we... I don't want this to become an ECAC ask. Right, right. Yeah. Um, and then that have a different... Looked at differently than a residential request would look at. Looked at. And I don't want to, you know, this is being, I think that it's really powerful that it was being presented by you and two students, mm -hmm. and I don't want to lose that and make it feel more like an ECAC yeah. thing. Um, so that would be my suggestion as well. Yeah, I also feel like when, when we put out a request that probably comes after the climate action plan, it's got to be a much more strategic, exactly. methodical, analytical method of how did we come up with these requests as opposed to Some the requests that, uh, you know, that yeah, YZ yeah. presence came, yeah. came up with. Right. Um, so I would... So that, that softer awesome. support yep. doesn't do 
as much, but perhaps that's all the ECAC is willing to do at this point. Um, I would personally actually be comfortable. I, I support what y'all are saying, and I'd be comfortable with that. I actually would be comfortable endorsing this proposal uh, because I appreciate that we're anticipating kind of a dilution of our endorsement in the future. I appreciate that we want to uh, not conflate this proposal with an ECAC proposal. And also, I don't actually think that we are yet close to living in a reality where that super saturation of projects that we risk endorsing is a reality. So for that reason, I think that we're over So for, for that reason, I actually would be comfortable endorsing this. I don't, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not super concerned. I, I appreciate the concerns, but I don't really feel them about, uh, the risks of establishing precedents that may become problematic in some hypothetical future. I, I would add to that, and I'm happy to endorse it um, with those same caveats, but in addition, um, while we haven't done a methodical look around everything around mm -hmm. um, town, I mean, the high school and the middle school do strike me as probably being on that list <laughs> at the end of the day. I mean, they're big, if not the largest municipal facilities big parking lots, they got big roofs, they got students being educated, and uh, it, it, and we're not endorsing construction, we're endorsing exploration, exploration of construction, um, and uh, that seems like it should, it, it, it is likely to fall into a list of, of potential sites but to explore. It isn't just, it, it, it mentions, you know, town sites, you know, to explore the, the possibilities for solar siting, um, specifies the parking lots in um, the, the... That's that, right. There's a section here that asks the consultant to look all across yeah, towns across for solar sites as yeah, well. Yeah, okay, yeah. town-owned sites or... Yeah, uh, yeah, town-owned sites. And municipal okay. building. Right. But the detailed more yeah. would be on the, the limited it, high school, it, it was. middle school. But, I, you know, I would argue that this is... You know, solar siting is definitely something that we will yeah. need information. We know that. Yeah, exactly. So, in, in in my view, we know that we need information on solar siting. Um, get, as as a committee, we have talked about how we want to support urgent actions to move that forward. Um, there may be some procedural concerns with how this is shaking out in this particular instance, but this is already there. It's on the table. It's ready to go. I think we should endorse it for that reason because it's there. The, the reason the school put it on their budget request is because the students asked for it. Okay. Yeah. That's, you know, part of why we did it, too. And students have tried this before. Yeah. They've been working on it for a couple of years. Okay. Make a motion. We want to just endorse Okay. I move, I move to... Uh, what, what are we moving to do? Endorse? <laughs> are we recommending, right. that, recommending that the council... Recommending that the... Recommending that who yeah. approve this? Did you say we endorse it? We don't endorse know. it. No. <laughs> who 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 who, 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 who does this go to next? Who's who's oh, desk is this on? It's gonna but move then it's gonna a couple of places, so you don't want to yeah. endorse it too. Well, let's just I move to endorse. I move to endorse uh, resident the resident capital request for twenty five thousand dollars to explore a solar installation at the high school and further exploration of solar siting across the town. As submitted by Andrew Rose, CEO of the Allison Rowell. Okay, uh, all those in favor? I think I have to recuse myself. Okay, all right, great. Um, great, thanks for putting that in. And knowing that we could do that. <laughs> yeah, I did not know that. Yeah, but I know. The floodgates are going to open now. Yeah, yeah. Well, next the year. Question no, is last year's budget. Say again. Yeah. Wasn't there yeah. a resident re one, one resident request last year's budget? There was. It yeah, was around the farm. school. It was to get the Crocker Farm School yeah. study to expand it. But, you know, yeah. study oh. what, what could be done to there was something smaller. I think there was some process of that too. Oh, there was. Yeah, I think there was a process. So let's. Sorry, I messed something up. Um, 
on that, do we need to write any sort of formal endorsement on parchment with the silver edges to enroll the, the minutes the citizens? will do. Okay. okay. And we'll include yeah, it in our memo. Yeah. We'll yeah. Okay. Um, so update on MVP process, I think we already did, right? So I think we're good there. Um, so what we talked about, we have about half an hour left, give or take. Um, what we talked about doing is beginning our sector discussion. So one of the things that we, um, to remind everybody and let Ash know, um, that we talked about last week was the fact that we know we're going to have to move very quickly once we get the climate action plan funding in place and once we get the consultants in place, we spent a lot of time talking about what we would look for in a consultant and the questions we wanted to ask, and then we sort of turned it over to talking more about what what our climate action plan excuse me, is going to look like in terms of what sectors will it cover and how we're going to approach those, those sectors. Um, so we talked about the general kind of sectors of buildings, energy renewables, it's class slash CCA, and transportation. Um, and we talked about maybe getting into small groups, not to be, um, you know, it doesn't have to be permanent groups, but for maybe right now, just breaking out for about the next 10 or 15 minutes together and starting to brainstorm a little bit in each of those sectors um, what we, so where did I write these numbers? <laughs> Um, identify some initial projects that we might want to explore, near term, medium term, longer term, um, research other plans in those areas, which we're not going to do in the next 15 minutes, but if we thought about it at all, tee up questions, analytical work, and research we want the consultant to do for each of these sectors, look at high priorities, outreach, um, and pull out ideas that are cross-cutting or overarching. So I think particularly this, the teeing up the questions, work and research might be a good little chunk we can think about right now for each sector. Like for transportation, what are some like high level questions, kind of work what we need, what research do we want to do um, that will lead us to maybe a couple projects <coughs> we would love to see spelled out specifically in the plan. Um, Do we want to split into groups, or do we just want to pick a sector right now and do that together? Uh oh, I don't think we have enough time to do each sector together. So let's look and see how it works. Let's just pick an easy one to start. Easy. We, we yeah, talked a little easy. bit about this, and did we sort of? Like, uh, volunteer ourselves into different yeah. sectors? Yeah. We started doing that, and okay. then we kind of just said, actually, let's not split ourselves up yet. Let's. Uh, okay. Um, so, yes. Yeah, let's do it together. Electricity? And so, electricity. Do, yeah. do it together quickly? Okay. So, um, and I don't think we have to, I think let's throw out ideas if they maybe fall under the building category, or it doesn't matter. Sure. Let's just throw yeah. them out. Um, so, yeah. renewable. Electricity. I mean, our ultimate goal would, of course, to be to meet our goals would be that we are 100% net zero electricity by 2050, half renewable by 2030, 25%. <laughs> A lot more aggressive than that, actually, because electricity is the easiest thing to do. If we're trying to go 25% yeah, yeah, yeah. overall emissions reductions mm -hmm. by 25, we're talking close to 100% by 2025. That's true. It and electricity is not easy to do. Yeah. It takes freaking forever, <laughs> as we know. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, where are we now? We need to know what, we need some data. Mm -hmm. That's and, available. And we are talking all classes of renewables, those are including private, behind the meter. Electricity. Mm -hmm. Renewable, municipal owned, institution owned, and renewable that's on the grid provided now by Eversource but in yeah. the future by CCA. Right, so we start with 14%. Mm -hmm. 
What's that? Oh, that's just physics. Oh, that's source, right. um, yeah, the statement of I mean, we didn't, we, we could say because electricity is easier, simpler, <laughs> yeah. but not easy. Um, right. we, we could say in addition, 25% you know, in addition to what, the, our, uh, what you know, is required at the state level for our electric supply. I mean, I think it would be worth trying to figure out and maybe this exists elsewhere in the state of Massachusetts or even in our region, but given where we are, um, what is the most efficient mix of renewables that we ought to be pursuing and how, right? Like, um, mm. I mean, because, you know, for example, we just endorsed a resident capital uh, request for siting solar. Um, we did that because there's not, because there's a, there's a paucity of proposals for renewable installations. Um, do we need to be thinking more strategically about that in the future, like you mentioned, and how are we going to do that? So, yeah, what, what is the kind of optimal mix, mix for us? What, what percent wind, what yeah. percent solar, et cetera? Yeah, so I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, part of it is also, I mean, what are the uh, electricity um, is either, you know, we generate it our own, ourselves, or we import it, yep. uh, or we just get it from what's the mix in the group on, on the grid, or we can contract specifically for renewables from elsewhere. Um, and, I mean, one of the questions is, is what is the resources, and, and not just solar, but wind or whatever, I'm sure you went on with wind and hammer, so it's uh, economical. Exactly. Um, uh, you know, what, what, what it, I think it would be interesting to do a resource assessment of solar opportunities in Amherst, Within the town boundaries, um, and then those that are, you know, maybe, and, and this is overlap with the CCA. Um, what are the um, uh, opportunities for, for solar very proximate to Amherst? I'm not sure how we would define that. Um, but then also look at what are the um, uh, other forms of, of renewables. Um, Within Massachusetts or within ISO New England, that might also be um, a resource available to Amherst. M meaning, meaning that we could um, invest in, or that we could buy the net metering credits, or we could um, buy the RECs. You know, there, there's different, yep. different ways, ways yeah. to think about this, and yeah. you know, what counts. We have not, to have that conversation sometime. What counts? And we're not just talking about the municipality. We're talking about oh, yeah, yeah. businesses and residents. Yeah. 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 In my mind, it makes sense to, to create the different categories with the municipality being one category, the institutions being a category, the grid being a category, and then private um, homeowners or private Dwell. businesses, dwellings, thank you, uh, as another category. And maybe that's the last category that needs the most help, given that the CCA is moving forward on the municipal side, the grid is a little bit bigger than we can chew on, and the institutions are making good progress without our help, not with our help, but outside of this committee. And, uh, and so that leaves the citizens and the dwellings at, at that level. What what could is there something we can do to enhance, increase the number that are yeah, I like that approach because it sort of helps us narrow in on where we should focus exactly. our energy mm -hmm. um, versus where some of the other things happening. I also just elsewhere. like to get a, yes. an energy balance done. Like, I mean, what we have data from CCF what the energy load is, the electricity load is in, in Amherst, um, and so um, if that if that tells us our load, um, and then we can sort of at least use that as a basis to um, compare that with how much we could generate within with the resources we have in town um, with what can be accomplished through energy efficiency quite frankly um, and then uh, and then what is uh, what, what percentage already comes in at 14 about 16 percent now in 2020 um, from the grid um, and what
percent per year. Isn't it? Yeah, it goes up two percent a year. Now. Oh, that's right. We passed that yeah, last. They, yeah, they changed it. Yeah. Do we know? Do I? You said the load. Is that in demand? KW or is it in the usage? KWH. KW? We have. We are. Sure, we have KW. We have that. I think it must be just basic service. Yeah, I think it might be. Yeah, so anybody who's on a third party service, we wouldn't know. The, the beauty of the CCA is that it takes care of the residential. We, we know, you know, it's like whatever we decide the CCA level of, of green energy can be at any given time, that, that's how much everybody who's in is using. Exactly. Assuming we get this greatest CCA you can imagine, is there still a need for dwellings to have solar on their own roofs behind their meters? Need? Need? Need to get closer to the 100% renewable goal. Well, there's not an absolute need because you could always, you know, the, the right. retailer, could, the supplier that we contract with could be specified to, you know, procure energy from other renewable energy resources and, and account for that to serve the load in Hammer. So you don't need it, but um, I think the CCA would be looking to promote that mm -hmm. and okay. encourage that. And, uh, and, and even help by uh, the racks so that, you know, yeah, if they're selling the racks to someone else, can we count their solar? Yeah. Well, that's a problem, quite frankly, with the 16% that comes in with the RPS as well. What, that, those are all purchase racks. Yeah, racks. those are all. I mean, those are all uh, claimed by the citizens of Massachusetts, not right. uh, not, not. No, it's claimed not. by the utilities. They that's hire the yeah, racks. Exactly. Well, to meet their compliance, yes. So I don't think we would be affording yeah. anybody's solar racks at this in this market. I think it'd be really hard. I mean, yeah. obviously the the percentage of the of the uh, revenue that is being uh, is, is accrued to the recs now is getting less and less as the smart program sort of gets more and more uh, less incentive. But it's still really hard to afford solar on a limited budget if you hold on to your recs. Yeah. We could actually buy the recs and sell them to people who can't put it on their roof to, you know, who want to go higher, you know, higher in, in th that's what a lot of the green CCAs do. They, they have an opt up. They have an opt out. They have the standard. They have a opt up halfway to green and opt up 100%, which means they're paying, like I'm I've signed up to pay extra. For class one racks. For class one racks. So those are not solar racks in Massachusetts, though. Those are different. Or at least not recent might, solar might, racks in Massachusetts. They, or wind, or, yeah, they could be yeah. a yeah. number yeah. of things. But the, the SMART program, there's no more S racks. But, yeah. There's still racks. Yeah. Um, solar is uh, under yeah. the racks now. Okay. Well, well, as a potential thing to do, is one of them find ways to promote rooftop solar to residents and dwelling owners? I think it'd be helpful for us to, I think it'd be helpful in the climate action plan process to really, I, I sort of, it's almost like a gap analysis. Like what are the gaps that need to be filled with our climate action plan? And so what is happening to, for citizen level solar? And what can what gaps are being filled there? Maybe it's just making sure that information is getting out to people. Yeah. Maybe that's a gap we can fill. Maybe it's understanding better what the community solar angle is and whether that needs to be part of our plan um, to get that information out to citizens or whatever it might be. So I think that would be really a helpful outcome of the 
to say, okay, looking at all this, where we really need to focus our energy is yeah. throw something out of like zoning to make to make developers make sure that all the roofs are solar ready or blah 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 or something like that. Like maybe there's po specific policies that we yeah. see gaps. Well, there's also specific programs too. So we did yeah. solarize yeah. once, and I would actually I, w I was thinking about it today that it would be really nice to apply for the next round. And we could include air source heat pumps as part of that, so it's not just solar; it's also, you know, other technology as well. Yeah. And I think we should apply for doing both. When um, when is that next uh, round? I don't, I'm okay. afraid to apply. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, that would be particularly exciting if we had the CCA in a little further along oh, right, exactly. to integrate it into the CCA um, uh, yeah, framework. Yeah. Um, is there a reason yeah, to wait? Spring. What's that? Why would we wait? Well, I'm not. I'm saying that it would be nice if we had the CCA framework to do the solarized program as part of the CCA framework because they're very compatible with each other. Um, and so it's a lost opportunity if we don't. I'm not suggesting. Well, but but once we have CCA, we can provide additional incentives for people to do it. So not everyone's going to be able to afford a ten thousand dollar, you know, each, yeah, heat heat pump system for whole house, you know, it, so, I, I don't see anything else. So but the solarized program, is that something that requires a fair bit of time from town staff, or is that something that is run by a, a commercial company? So the way it's structured is that, um, so the last time we did it, I served as the, I did the application, but um, I did some outreach and we put together, I put together a solar team. And so the solar team does, they're really the ones that will go out and promote the program. But is that paid the, staff too? Or is that volunteers? They're volunteers. There is one, the, so the coach is paid. Uh, it's just a stipend. It was like $500. So the coach is paid a stipend, but the rest of the team are basically volunteers. And our coach didn't even keep the stipend, basically just donated it to the effort. So, um, so it's the, the staff time for me up front, the application process. Yeah. Um, Took quite a bit of time, but, you know. But I'm, but I fully expect that I'll be doing this again. So it's not like it's a new thing. It's something I plan on hoping to do. Um, so that takes a lot of upfront work. Once it gets going, once the team is um, put together, um, the team, like I said, does a lot of the outreach at events and things, creates events and opportunities. Do, they did door to door. They did all kinds of uh, really creative stuff. Um, but they also worked really closely with our um, solar developer consultant, uh, contractor, which was Northeast Solar, and they do quite a bit on their own as well. Did Northeast apply to Yes. Be? So it, it's the way the program is structured. It's a state program. They vet all of the contractors so that we basically get to say, you know, we put in our application, and they actually say we would like to work with these towns. So they identify which towns they want to work with, and then we're provided with a list of who the contractors are, and then we proceed to sort of um, go through their, you know, uh, responses, and they submit information to us, and we, um, I think we ended up interviewing maybe four. Okay. So, yeah. I think we had five. I think there were one or two companies we just automatically wrote off and said no, but we interviewed four different companies, and we didn't go to the one with the one that had the best price. We went with the one that had the most local experience and who we felt would be a really good partner, and they were excellent. They did a great job. And you think there's capacity to repeat that and there'd be plenty of business, plenty of opportunity for new installations? I, well, part of it is that I think we include the air source heat pump this time, because uh, okay. the first time was only solar. This time, I think, you know, the air source heat pump, you know, technology, people are starting to be more familiar with it. Yeah. So I think we'd have to do an educational component to that, which is a little more than we did even with the solar. But um, I and think that's, it's that's time. Part of the state program? And that's part of the state program. And so you, you'd have two um, vendors, a, a solar and I think we'd have two. I think I, I haven't, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure they must that's have two. That's what Smart did. Yeah. Uh -huh. a, yeah. One yeah. vendor. And is there energy efficiency measures in, rolled into that? Um, you know, insulation, air sealing, that kind of thing? I think maybe with the air star heat pump there could be. And the way it was, um, we, mm. we handled that with the solarized program was that People were, it was recommended that people first contact Smart um, Mass Save right. and work through Mass Save, get an audit, yeah. and then sort of 
Yeah. You know, and so everyone who did it had to at least have had an audit first. Okay. So let's not get too much in the weeds about it, right? So, um, so I think oh, it does make me think that in our climate action plan, we may be proposing that we increase our use of electricity. We need to electrify everything. Yeah. We need to have things ready, and that actually is going to increase our electricity emissions. Yeah, big time. I think that's a good point. Um, and this is actually um, something that I've been been drafting out, which I think could be a nice framework for each of our sections, or each of our sort of sectors, is sort of like the first question, where are we now? What's our load? What is our current renewables? Where do we need to go? What's our load going to look like in the future to meet our goals? Probably a lot more electricity. What can we do locally? What is our resource assessment? What's our most efficient mix of renewables? Um, I think within where do we need to go, we need to kind of determine how we're going to approach the credit question. Um, what maybe interim goal, sector level goals should we be setting around some of that? What actions are happening in the following categories and how far will they get us towards our goal? versus what are the gaps in the municipalities and institutions as well as in citizens, and then what are the gaps that need to be filled and how are they going to be filled by who? What actions do we need to take? What projects, what policies, what programs and grants, what partnerships? And then ending the section with like, okay, and then here are the pilot projects that we're going to, like that would be a, in my mind, that's a solid analysis mm -hmm. yeah. of renewable energy for a climate action plan. Well, um, and, but we, we need to have something that takes us to 25, to 30, to 50, right? So, <clears throat> yeah, so maybe that comes in with the gaps and what do they and, and what do they need filled and what pilot projects, or we could expand that to be pilot projects into longer term projects. I think something that we've talked about in the past is whether we want this to be seen as I think we ha have discussed not wanting to plan very specifically out all the way because we don't know what's going to happen, but rather frame it out to what our long-term goals are and then identify some shorter-term projects and then also <coughs> identify within the Climate Action Plan how we're going to update those in a more concise mm -hmm. way. Um, the gap analysis could give us a sense as to we need to increase rooftop solar by 30% as a whole, mm -hmm. and that would that move us this far towards the neutrality pool, mm -hmm. just to at least. We need to increase efficiency in homes by X percent, and that could translate into the number of homes that do mass aid programs or something similar. Mm -hmm. um, we need to not build buildings that add well, carbon, but that means they're going to be electric. <laughs> Have solar, or, yeah. But yeah, so those could be translated into there may be guesses whether thirty percent additional solar would be probably back in the envelope. Figure out how much that would move the needle towards neutrality goals. Mm -hmm. I'd be happy to do a just a quick analysis if anyone else could do it. But um, of what, um, uh, how much growth of solar has there been in Massachusetts? Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in Amherst, you know, from mm -hmm. from. Uh, 2014 or whatever the beginning of, of solar was, and, and sort of look and compare that to Massachusetts generally and see if we're on yeah. a trajectory that's uh, too slow or mm -hmm. higher or slower yeah, than yeah. the normal, than the average. But then also use that to say, okay, at this pace, are we, you know, are we getting to 20% at uh, whatever year, or are we like woefully, woefully short, or, or are we just doing great? Um, it, uh, DOER has, yeah. as if for anybody. Uh, by town? Uh, it, yeah, not by, yeah, by town. It won't give you the address. No. But by, by town. Yeah. So you can see every year how much new solar was installed. And mm -hmm. all that. Yeah, it, 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 um, yeah, yeah, it should be accurate for, for this purpose. Yeah. And, and uh, it, it can divide it down to whatever um, small project being residential and then there's some larger projects too. I often wondered if you could just have a Google, look at a Google map <laughs> and see everybody's solar panels. Well, they, uh, well, they, 
the DOER database, and you know, even any of the other databases, they wouldn't have address specific for residential. It, it, um, oh, and you could see it on the map. Oh, you mean? Uh, yeah. Yeah, but the Google <laughs> does, there is some software that I'm not familiar with, but I've heard about it that um, will do Google Maps and give you a pretty good sense, a, a sense of how much uh, rooftop area and solar yeah. capacity you could fit in that neighborhood. be able to ask planning too if there's a if they could generate some kind of a map or our GI, actually our GIS person here if they could generate yeah. a map yeah I don't know we need it to know addresses we just want to know what the growth yeah, rate yeah well, I was going to say not state. addresses just sort of like a it seems like the know. zoning the permits the electrical permits yeah the they're going to have the yeah. Yeah. yeah we have I mean we have the information it's just yeah, a matter of does someone have the time is our data well so does going? the town want to put out uh, information Specific. You do play specific neighborhood. That's what I'm saying. By okay. it wouldn't be by how you know okay. there'd be sort of a a general yeah. dot, not yeah. necessarily yeah. a specific house. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A blurry, blurry dot or big yeah. enough dot. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think that's a good, a really good start. I think if we could brainstorm that for each of the other sectors next <coughs> time. Um, as well as a couple other sections that we've talked about. I mean, we certainly talked about education being a part of our plan. Um, we also need to build, you know what we forgot is resiliency in here, though. We need to fit that in somewhere. Um, but just on the electricity side, just, for, yeah. just to tee up there, I think in this renewable sub, uh, part, um, we also want to look at the role build out of energy storage uh, because um, you know we, you can't run the whole town on solar because then nobody has anything at night time or whatever and way too much in the daytime uh, but also uh, because part of the um, goal of uh, getting more renewables is also reducing peak loads uh, and with the CCA uh, is all, not all about but part of that is about reducing improving the load curve associated with the uh, with the town um, and so um, you know bringing in some in, in that analysis of the amount of storage that makes sense and potentially where the where storage is located and how it's operated and it raises a lot of questions about also who owns it who operates and all that stuff too but and that's resiliency and it's a resiliency yeah. that's yeah. why that's yeah. why yeah. the yeah. Why yeah. The we also need to um, adapt and I would say that and I know this isn't going to specifically speak to um, carbon reductions but there because this was an MVP grant we do need to look at um, you know some some of them the larger vulnerabilities in town and flooding there's specific neighborhood flooding um, that we need to sort of look at resiliency in those terms as well we, we also could you know I don't think resiliency is necessarily a totally separate thing maybe we should think of it in each of the sectors so any new electric you know wires should be underground that's resiliency right? microgrids connected to solar Um, okay, so I think we can continue that next time. Um, I think we will have a really good sort of foundation with which to start. Okay. Do you yeah, want, exciting. could you give us more specific prompts before next meeting? Yes. I'll share what I just okay. typed up. Um, if you have any comments on it, send them just to me. Um, and then I'll throw out the next, the other like sections we've yeah. been talking about. Um, so transportation buildings, education, town, I call it town capacity, but that was our discussion about staffing levels and things like that. And then updating the plan. These are just, in my mind, sections that we want to make sure are part of the 
climate action plan, and there's probably others that I've missed. Did you just type that out as we were talking? Yes. Yeah. That was brilliant. Thanks. This is like my skill. <laughs> I have a few, and this is one of them. So, <laughs> uh, okay, great. So I think we're actually going to wrap up on time. Look at that. Um, any public comment to close out the meeting? Most interesting. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Um, okay, so next meeting we'll go through that. We'll look at the annual report or the memo um, draft. Um, I'll share any updates from my email with Paul, if not before then. And I think that's it. Right? And we'll look at questions about um, questions for the interview process. Yes. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.